Just a reminder before we start this week's video, today is Black Friday and we just did another restock on our Black Forest resins. All of it is 15% off right now. You can find a link in the description to go purchase that. Uh, but let's get on to this week's video. Hey everyone, it's Dylan. This week is gonna be a whole lot of finishing tables. That's gonna be kind of the focus for this video. We have got uh, the big conference table that you saw us working on last week. That's gonna get its first coat. I've got this smaller dining table beside me. It's funny that we call this small. This is still a pretty big dining table. Uh, and if you look downstairs, we have also got JB's dining table down there, nearly ready for its first coat. So we're gonna show you on these tables, they're already sanded, uh, so we're gonna show you the just the finishing process. On JB's table, you're gonna get to see a little bit of the sanding process too. Uh, we actually got some new machines this week that I'm probably gonna introduce in this video. They are gem sanders and polishers. Um, they are a brand new thing. We haven't tried them before, but we've heard a lot of good things about them, and we are gonna be a dealer for them. So. Whether it's in this video or next week's video, you will be able to find those for sale on our website. Uh, but saying that, we're going to get started first on this little dining table and we'll show you our process. Nice. Does it have some like, good weight to it? Yeah. yeah. It's like solid iron. Oh! That's really good, hey? Yeah. yeah. Like, like Ben just said, we know it's right away. Lots of weight. Not going to tamp and it's also going to let you get really good friction with the pads because it's going to be pushing down so hard on it. So, I don't know. We're excited to try this out. Yeah. I wonder if this this polisher is gonna replace the need to have to use the sander. Like the big sander? Uh, like the like the Hands the Mercas. Maybe. I don't know, but they they give a pretty nice polish on it too when you hit it with yeah. the Merca. Yeah. So oh, I, I see what you mean, like finishing with. The yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Oh yeah. Feels pretty good. Yeah. So quiet. So I usually start by putting some right on the resin because this product is so thin that if you put it directly on the wood and you let it sit for any longer than 20 to 30 seconds, it'll actually stain it. Yeah. And it'll leave marks that won't come out. And I've experienced it firsthand. Uh, the first couple months that I was working here, it happened to me like four or five times before I really clued in. It's very frustrating. Yeah, and then <laughs> you have to, you have no choice but to wait for it to dry and sand it out. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, just, it's way, way, way better to, to do it the way Ben's doing it. And then that's kind of the same reason I'm going and hitting the edges right now. Um, now, the, the reason I'm doing this is so we don't get any drips over the side. Ben is a very careful finisher, so we're not really going to have too many drips over the side, but if you thought you would be creating a lot of drips on your edge, you always are going to want to hit that edge first. Um, or if you're really careful, you don't need to, but that's just sort of our philosophy. Another uh, really important thing when it just comes to finishing that you can see Ben's doing here right now uh, is just applying a thin coat. If you put too thick of a coat on your surface, the you're gonna have too much of the oils and waxes building up and they're actually gonna stop the product from drying. So by putting a thin coat on, you get you still get good penetration, but you ensure the finish will actually cure. Also, another reason to add on that is you just don't want to put too much because it takes a really long time to buff it off if you don't or if you do put too much. And speaking from experience, it's pretty frustrating when you've been buffing a table for half an hour and it's still not dry. Yeah. And then you tend to just, you get you get frustrated, so you give up, and then you don't get a good finish. So Ben, why do you like using the the brush to apply instead of just like a, a scotch brite or that, or even dumping it on? Well, it controls how much I am able to put on. Um, I find that if I dump it on, it's usually too much. Yeah. Yeah. And then I spend way too long trying to just get it off. Like and then that's before. Yeah, and then that's wasting product, right? Yeah. Um, with a brush, I it's it's pretty hard to run out of product on your brush. Yeah. And once you do, you just dip it in. Also, it keeps your hands dry. That's a good point. I, I hate dipping my hand into the can and then I can't touch anything 
while I've got this on my hands. This is what your hands look like if you yeah. use a scotch brake. Yeah. Touch yeah. all of your gloves. And yeah. You touch your pants. It's all of your clothes. It smell like Osmo. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't a horrible smell. No. It's not amazing, but no. it's not gross either. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's like. It's not like a noxious smell. Like yeah. this product. And that's because it's not toxic. Like all of Osmo's products are plant-based oils and waxes, so you don't have to worry um, about harming yourself. It is still good, you know, in some of their products they do have solvents, so if you're not in a well-ventilated area, it's definitely a good idea to wear a mask. Um, but when they're cured, all their products are food safe. Um, they even have products that are approved for use on children's toys. So it means that saliva won't break down the finish, so you're your kid could chew on their toy finished with Osmo and not worry about hurting themselves. That's pretty sweet. I didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah. Water on Do a water test. All right, well, we are just putting the first coat of oil on the conference table. Right now, uh, as I speak, I'm filming for Instagram on this phone here, and then we're getting a time lapse. <laughs> excuse me, up there as well. Uh, but Sauger is just putting down that first coat right now on this big Claro Walnut conference table. Uh, we're using the extra thin for the first coat and we always like to put it on with the mechanical buffer there. It just helps generate some friction and drive the oil uh, deeper into the pores of the wood. But we will get this first coat put on here and then we'll show you what it's looking like. Just solid sanding uh, and finishing. Sagar and I got the first coat all done. So here's the table, all finished up. We're gonna leave this to dry overnight before we keep moving forward on it. But look at the detail in this grain here. Took a very long time to get all the sanding scratches out. Like we, that, um, that time lapse that you guys saw uh, of us sanding, that was just 120. Yeah. yeah, 120 took forever. Five hours basically, but that's, that's really important. The, the better job you do with your lower grits, the easier it's going to be for the higher grits. So now this will sit overnight, like I said. We'll probably flip it over in the morning, do some coats on the bottom. And then by Friday, we're going to be delivering this piece. So should should be in this week's video, I'm hoping. If not, you'll see it the week following. Now, uh, right here behind me, Ben is getting ready to do the second coat on the bottom of the conference table. So he did the first coat this morning. It's almost dry. Uh, we're, it's dry enough for us to put our next coat on, so we're gonna put that next coat on. Um, one thing we actually kind of learned working on these conference tables is that temperature is super important when it comes to the cure time. We originally had these tables downstairs and we came in the next morning and they weren't dry. Uh, whereas upstairs they seem to be drying a lot quicker. So that's just something for you guys to know if you're doing this in your garage and it's cold, don't expect the finish to cure that quickly. We're upstairs in the pour room right now. Uh, Spencer, Dennis and I are just getting ready to pour in, I think it's 90 liters. Yeah, 90 liters we mixed up here for this dining table package. We showed you these slabs. Uh, in the last two videos, so we've got them cut up, put in the mold. Uh, this is going to be a transparent black resin today, and I know we always end up doing like smoky gray or transparent black because that's just what our clients order. So if you really want to see a different color, you know we do have our quote form for a table in the in the bio, so you can order a table whatever color you guys want.
It's Friday now, the end of the week. Here's the pour that you saw us do yesterday. This is the 90 liter trans, uh, transparent black pour. You can see there's basically no bubbles, just a few on the surface. And I think the temperature on this was at about like 25 degrees, so it was uh, nice and cool, not too hot at all. Uh, we'll be taking this piece out of the mold on Tuesday and you'll see us start working on this next week. Uh, we also mentioned that we were going to try and get a coat of finish on JB Smooth's dining table this week. We couldn't because we're actually getting ready for the big conference table delivery right now. So in like I think eight hours we're going to be downtown Calgary delivering the big conference table and that's sort of going to be one of the main focuses in next week's video as well. Uh, but I really hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit uh, a little bit about the finishes in this week's video and don't forget to go to our website, check out that Black Friday sale. It could even all be sold out already. I don't know. You better go check. See you guys.